Hi, welcome to Shrink Wrapped. I'm Allison Colorosi here with Dr. David Colorosi, and it's been a minute, Dr. Dave, but we're back. Happy New Year's. It's our New Year's resolution to keep posting on Shrink Wrapped. So, Allison loves New Year's resolutions. Like, like the research would say, the research would say New Year's resolutions are good. Your chances of successfully, you know, following through on your New Year's resolution is like 15%, okay? <laughs> Which is better than like the, the actual habit changing percentage of like 3%. So there's, there's value in doing New Year's resolutions. But Allison loves them so much that she wants to do, like this year she wants to do 23 New Year's resolutions. 23 in 2023. Well, you have to give credit where credit is due because that is Gretchen Rubin from the Happiness Project. That's her goal, and I'm stealing it from her. No, oh, I didn't know it was Gretchen Rubin's thing. Well, Gretchen <laughs> Rubin needs to know that 23 goals is an overwhelming number of goals. I love Gretchen Rubin. All right. Well, all right, well we're going to do it. We're doing 23 things. It's, I will tell you this. It is interesting that my list of goals... Most of Allison's goals are, are, are goals for me to work on. Don't you think? Like, yeah. it's ne your goal is never like uh, Allison's whatever, going to get in shape. It's like we're going to live a healthier lifestyle. And I feel like I'm always looped into your goals. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm also the big one this year is that I am taking care of future David. David, you just stole my thunder because that is my intention, my overarching intention for the That's year. what I mean. That was not my actual goal, but that's <laughs> the goal that was given to me by my wife. Um, David, you yeah. have a problem with planning, which I think planning and like thinking ahead, which I think globally has caused some, some fights. Has Disagreements. That's, that's you don't like that. So I was helping us by both of us planning for future, Allison and David. Yeah, yeah. How's Can it I just play devil's advocate? I just play devil's advocate, which is, <laughs> the, you know, probably what you initially were attracted to when we first started dating was the spontaneity, the flexibility. Right, those are good traits that you no. liked, and now we're 15 years in, and now you want me to be Mr. Planful. Well, I just feel like, as a psychologist, you should know that growth is an opportunity. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and we are growing. We are our family has grown since we could be spontaneous all the time. Mm. We got four different schedules. Mm -hmm. You know how feedback? They always say like feedback is a <laughs> gift. Allison gives me lots of gifts about my planning. It's a gift. Yeah, yeah thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, so my overarching goal is uh, to help future Allison. And mm. I've been really focused on it. She has. And then real judgmental of somebody else is, by chance, not taking care of I like future to do, David. I like to do check-ins to see where David has helped future David. And so far, he hasn't. <laughs> I just want him to schedule a dentist appointment. All right. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm getting better at taking care of future David. By the way, I scheduled my dentist appointment. Okay, I'm gonna, jeez. Okay, let's talk about something else. What, let's talk about pop, what do you want to talk about? Prince Harry, <clears throat> sister wives, well, what's on your mind? Let's go, first let's, sister wives, mind blown. It has all imploded. Yes. And I, I like, I have, fall, I was a super fan of sister wives. I had watched every episode, every season, for the most part. And I even, like, during this season, I was so distraught about it. I read the book. And they are so far from where they are now. Um, it's crazy. Wait, can you, were you actually distraught? Why are, why I do you think? I wasn't distraught. I was just, like, shocked. I mean, I think I was, like, distraught when Christine left. I was like, oh. Like, after Christine left, I knew Janelle would leave because Janelle's the coolest. Okay, but go, go back to why do you think people have such an emotional investment in Sister Wives? Well, because in the first, like, several seasons, they look so happy and fun. And then it was all a lie. And so we felt like we were lied to. It was kind of like the Rachel Hollis marriage lie. Okay, but the Rachel Hollis marriage lie, 
I think, makes sense because people saw their marriage, they consumed their content, they paid for their content in an effort to make their own marriages good. And then they found out they were being lied to, and they found, oh my God, well, if Rachel Hollis, who's, you know, the world's most intentional spouse, can't make it work, how can I make it? Like, I understood why there was an emotional investment in their success. But doesn't everybody look at Cody and go, not everybody, but doesn't, doesn't the lion's share of the viewers look at that sister wife dynamic and go, that's not for me, that can't possibly work. And I mean, you know not, I mean? not me personally. I was thinking like, well, I could be a sister wife. I would be the fun one. <laughs> you, would, you would have been Christine, right? Or Janelle. Who do you think you would have been? I would be a combination of Christine and Janelle. Okay. Well, so you were disappointed when the, when the, you were disappointed to learn that they couldn't make it work. Yeah, and like how mean Cody is. Like now, like he's a different person than you saw earlier. Like he was like fun and giggly, and on all the previous um, episodes, and now he's like just mean and scary. Yeah. And like to find out how miserable they actually all are. When, the, like, it didn't seem like they were. But, like, even when you read the book, like, Janelle had left, like, several times. So she was, like, not super happy in those marriages. Um, I didn't know that until I read the book. And then Mary was, like, basically neglected, like, way before Robin even joined the picture. So, like, if he couldn't take care of all of his wives, why was he bringing in another one is the question and mary like in order to get in his good according to the book in order to get into his good graces like brought robin in and it was like something special they had together like to talk about robin so rob so mary felt like connected to cody when she was like bringing in another woman to take her place it's all messed up to be honest yeah that sounds pretty messed up <laughs> Yeah, agreed. I mean, so you read the book. You thought the book was good. You were supposed to do a book review, a book review, or a book club, weren't you? Well, I feel like this is part. This is what this is doing. the book club. This is the book club. I haven't read the book. So this is gonna be a limited book club. I highlighted things you needed to look at, and then you <laughs> lost the book. Um, got lost when we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so. I mean, we've talked about the sister wives imploding, so I think... What do you think about um, Peyton Brown going on... Uh, he went on some... He got, there was like a three-hour interview of Peyton uh, talking about the family. Did I did I did not see it, but I'm so... Like, I, when I... The interviews were, uh, were not good. Like, the... Like, I, I got turned off by the interviewers immediately, yeah. so I couldn't yeah. watch it, but... Um, I mean, I bet they're dying to tell their story, like all the kids. Like, I really want to know what McKelty thinks, but she's she's in it with two twin babies right now. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I thought about and Madison. I thought about trying to interview them, uh, or I, I will tell you. So I thought about reacting to that. People have commented, "Why don't you react to the interview with Peyton?" And I felt like the interviewer did a good job of, I'm sure, getting at everything he wanted to get at. And so I feel like. Mm -hmm. That's sufficient. I don't know what I, I. I don't know how I would add value to that. Who is pa who is Peyton? Is he Janelle's son or is Peyton Christine's son? I Christine's think. son and Christine and I mean Peyton and who's the other one that does it? That does YouTube reviews. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Mm -hmm. They're they don't get along. Well, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn just posted a video saying. Peyton's the worst person ever. Don't consume his content. And she said that when she's, I think she feels emotionally unstable right now and not ready to produce content. So she's saying, I'm going to get it, you know, once I feel like I am on stable footing, then I'm going to put out a video sort of explaining why I have such distaste for, for Peyton. So there's definitely some, I mean, there's a, she, the way she was describing it, it felt like there was significant friction between the two. Okay. Well, I don't know. Do you I, think I should try to interview them? I mean, I, I, can I inter I just want to be a part of it. I you feel like I've been them. a part of their lives this whole time. You can interview <laughs> them. You could totally interview them. It's the same way I feel about Adam Carolla. 
Yeah. You want to interview him? Love him. <laughs> um, I used to be a sales rep and I would listen to Adam Carolla um, in his earlier years, like every single day. And I really thought we were best friends because I listen, listen to him so much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't anymore, but. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the other thing is I want to talk about is the spare. <laughs> yes? The spare? What do we think about the spare? How handsome is Harry? Handsome? Yeah, I never thought he was handsome, but I find him And you think very... he's handsome now? Yeah. Really? You don't? I mean, he's not my cup of tea, no. <laughs> really? Yeah. I keep wondering, I feel like he's got so much, the resources are, he's got all the resources in the world that his teeth could look better. They could shape those teeth a little bit, right? Some, some braces would do. That's not what they do over there. I know, but It's he, very superficial. But now thing. he's in Beverly Hills. So like, shouldn't, I thought, I thought his teeth were, and I'm just kidding, but I thought his teeth were better. Or, I'm sorry, I thought his teeth don't look great. Really? He's a good looking, you think he's a good looking guy? <laughs> um, I didn't ever until now. I do think he is cute. Um, I think you like him because he's emotionally available now. Yes, he is emotionally available. Yeah. I feel like he's emotionally over the top. Like the, like the book. I'm reading the book. I'm like halfway through. I will do a reaction to the book. But I, so far, I feel like the book is... What's the right word? I think the word is he is effusive in his des description of all of his emotions. It's like I, the book could be half the length if he would cut out all of the, it's like why I used to hate reading when I was in fifth grade. It was like, can you just tell me what the story is? And no, I don't want to do, I don't want to do two pages on all of the flowers around <laughs> grandma's house. You know what I mean? Like everything is, and every emotion that he felt. And it's like, you know, he can't possibly remember every emotional experience he had from the age of whatever it was from 12, on when he's describing himself here and he describes it in such granular detail that it makes me think this is all bs so much of that book is it's the same thing as the is the as the netflix show like it's just he is trying just like megan did they're just trying to get people on their sides to relate to them and which i do i'm on his I, i'm on his side but can we make it more concise just i got your, things to do what you want your therapist to say Less emotions, please. <laughs> I'm not a therapist. I'm not his therapist. Okay? I'm as a consumer of that book. I So far, I like the book because I like getting a window into his life. I agree with you. I was kind of impressed that he had such a good memory, and then I was mad that I don't have a good memory like that. <laughs> well, he's got... I mean... Yes. But someone is probably cataloging his history as well, like because he is a prince. So he probably... Has people cataloging. I mean, it's just crazy. Like, he remembers high school so well. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, or he doesn't, right? <laughs> or he has a ghostwriter that, has, that has flowery creative. language. Yes. And there, he's taking some creative license in how he writes the book. Yeah. One of the things that stands out to me about the book, though, and him in general, <laughs> is like how privileged he is that mm -hmm. sometimes like he misses it so i feel like he sometimes gets that he's very privileged, and then other times he doesn't so he was like lost and finding his way so he went to his handler or marco or whoever and was like <clears throat> i don't think college is for me what else should i do and they did a bunch of research and then came back with an idea and then he went to it and then yeah. that didn't work out and then they had researched another one and i was thinking like if I had someone that just like took care of the like the essay for me to be, get the internship, like there's a yeah. lot of steps yeah. <laughs> that he just didn't even have to take. So yes. I find it really funny. I feel like he misses that sometimes, like the amount of privilege. I, so I agree with you. I mean, I think his path. I think he'd have to I think he'd have to acknowledge that his path has been lubricated. Right, like his whole life has everything just goes a little bit more smoothly, 
as far as like what he does, where he goes, how he travels because of the wealth. And and cushy like, jobs. Yeah. Like well, the, I didn't know they're all cushy. He got like the one of the most coveted jobs that he had never even heard of in the military until he went and saw the commander. I wouldn't call it a cushy job. They he they called it he called it a plump job that everyone wanted. But he didn't even know about it until You're talking about the air traffic when he was like the air traffic controller for yeah. battle? I'm not sure if it called it cushy. May, I don't or think it's he, cushy, but like they said it was like the job that everyone wanted. Okay, he also flew Blackhawks, which is very difficult. I believe it, but the path was lubricated. Like if the idea that he had never heard of it, and then someone said, "Well, like, okay, what, what, so, okay, okay, okay." There's two. He had two tours. Yeah. Right. The first tour was the air traffic controller type of a job, mm-hmm. which is pretty difficult to do. The next one is he flew flew Blackhawks, exceptionally difficult to do. So I I feel like we have to stop short of saying that that and there was no. Uh, you know, he's got people's lives in his hands flying a Blackhawk. I mean, he, I mean, he's got criticized for talking about how he killed 25 people in battle. Like, that was not a... I'm not sure we could say it's a, that it was... That was easier for him. You've read a lot of, like, Navy SEAL books and stuff. Do mm-hmm. other people say how many people they've killed? I can't remember. Uh, uh, no, I've, I'm not sure I've ever heard of people. I mean, you know, like Lone Survivor. Yeah, well, how many? Marcus Luttrell did... I don't think I don't think he gave his number, but he talked about killing people. Um, I think some. I mean, I think some of them do. I think, but Marcus Luttrell is not liked by a lot of people in the military because they feel like he was too cavalier talking about that. I think Prince Harry, in my opinion, was. Here's what I'll say: is I think he was way too cavalier talking about life and death, as he was referring to the military. I also think that it's coherent, or it's, or maybe coherent is the wrong word. It is, it's on the ro- the same tone as the rest of the book. He is very transparent about all of his emotions with his mother, with his brother, with his dad. Very transparent when he got frostbite on his penis. Very transparent about like he's very transparent about everything, to the point where you'd be like, hey, hey, Harry, probably don't need to go into that level of detail, right? And so I think. I think it was too much, but probably what he was thinking is, I'm gonna. This is a. This is like a true tell-all, and I'm gonna share everything. Yeah. That's probably what he was thinking, and he, he, th- I, if you asked him, he would say, I was trying to show respect and appreciation and honor for the military and what I did and how real it is. Right? He's not sugarcoating what he did. He's trying to be right. He, he, that's what he's trying to do. Um, if I were the Prince of Wales or whatever he is, I probably wouldn't have yeah. shared that. Well, I I don't know. I feel like they probably are dying to tell it like their story. So I kind of like it. I just feel, um, you know what I want? I want, I want to do a watch companion of the crown with Harry. With Harry. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And, and Prince William. Like if you could get them together in the same room, that would be really good. Um, I, I, I did watch, I'm, I'm also not done with the book, I'm further behind than you are, but um, I did think it was sad, I watched the 60, inter- minute, 60 Minutes interview with Harry, and like, again, he's so transparent that like, he's just like, I haven't talked to my brother, like, I hope we can, I hope he'll call me, and I was thinking like, that's so sad, like, the whole world is watching like, your fight. And there's yeah. so many details that we don't understand. Like, we only are getting Harry's side of the story, and Harry doesn't do a good job of telling Will's side of the story. He definitely doesn't. I think he also... Or Kate's side of the story. No. I, I think that he... I haven't... I mean, I think the book is in different phases, and I'm just in the... I'm finishing up, like, the military part of it. We're going to talk... I'm sure we're going to talk about Megan and the conflict there in a second as the book goes through. But as far as, I mean, no one knows exactly how much money he has. If you look it up, Prince Harry inherited ten million from his mom. Uh, Prince William inherited ten million from his mom. Mm-hmm. They got something like seven million from other 
sort of like other things that they have. So there's like 17 million each or 13 million each probably. Um, that was really his. When he left the institution, when he left the monarchy, that's probably all the money he had. And Megan had whatever money she had. And so that feels like a whole lot of money to me, but I imagine in their eyes, their minds, uh, it wasn't enough money. And so they've had to do these sort of different deals. They, uh, it's reported that the Netflix deal that they have was worth $100 million. They're turning into a production company there. I don't know what uh, Harry has gotten for this book, but I'm, I assume that he's getting a tremendous amount of money from the book. And so it feels to me like he has shifted his mindset to, I am leaving the royal family and all of the luxury, and now my main goal is to be able to provide for my family. And I don't think that Harry has a good metric for what reasonable living looks like. Right? For most people, $10 million would be more than enough. Right? But I think he's in the mindset of, at all, co- you know, no matter what, I've got to get more money and protect myself. And so he's in this place where he's, I think it's at all costs. I think he's okay with throwing his brother under the bus, throwing his dad under the bus, throwing the royal family under the bus. And my view of it is that he's definitely done that. The way he talks about it, his dad sounds like a total king. What's his name? King, I keep, King, King Charles. Charles. Seems like a complete negligent parent. Completely. Uh, Prince William seems like somebody who is perpetually jealous, lacks all emotion, and is just a stoic a-hole. That's the way he presents it. And so so he sent, he's going there and being like, yeah, I, I really want, I uh, hope that we can, you know, we can resume our familial relationships. And I can imagine if I'm, Prince uh, William, I'm going, kiss it. I don't want nothing to do with you. Like he's, in my opinion, sold the family out in an effort to make money. Oh my gosh. What if my sister wrote a book about me and you only got her perspective? Right? (laughs) Or, or, by the way, or if you wrote a book about your sister and only got your perspective. I know. It wouldn't be. It's right. And I think that's, that's, and on the world stage, we're all watching this. (laughs) Oh, it's so unfair. So it's really unfair. And um, <clears throat> next time we do one of these, I'll have read the whole book and we can talk about the. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't read his review of his relationship with Megan. Let's finish Let's both finish the book and we'll come back to it. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, let us know in the chat um, your goals. And remember that um, you can get this podcast at um, Shrink Wrapped. Um, on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks for joining.